Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? If you're new here, my name is Rodian and welcome to the channel. Okay, so today is going to be the first part of a new series I'm going to be doing called Bricklaying for Beginners. In this whole series, I'm going to be outlining various different things. Today, episode one, is going to be the tools. We're going to move on to different types of bricks. We're going to move on to, I'm going to explain what gauge is. I'm going to explain how to set out buildings. I'm going to explain various different bonds, various different finishes, joint finishes. There's quite, quite a lot that I'm going to be going through. So if you're interested in that, think about subscribing. The button's just down there. So give that a wallop and also ring that bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Okay, on to this video. Today, we're going to be taking a detailed look at bricklaying tools. More specifically, what tools I'm using and what tools are in my bag. Now, this series is not only going to be good for beginners or people who are looking to become bricklayers, like apprentices, etc. Also, seasoned bricklayers might be very interested in what I have to say. Especially when it comes to tools, all bricklayers are different, we all work in different ways, therefore we all like having different tools with us, we always find different things useful in different situations. So hopefully all you seasoned brickies out there might be able to uh, learn a thing from here. And also, if there's something that's missing out of my bag, get down in the comments and let me know. I'm always up for learning new things as well, so that's, uh, that's the start of it. Hopefully this is going to be a fantastic little series. Okay, let's see what bricklayers tools are all about. Right, okay, we'll start with the things that are out of the bag at the moment, which will be the levels. I have four levels here, and first off, a boat level. Now, this is useful for small areas. I like to use a boat level when plumbing up the first three courses of building a corner, and tight little spaces, very small, little boat level, often known as a boaty. So there's that. There we have the two foot level. Now, this is not my most ideal type of level, but my actual level that I used got stolen. So I've used this one, which is, I bought this when I was an apprentice and that was a fair few years ago now. So it's, it's standing the test of time and it does have a lot of dents and scratches on the top because when I was young, I did not know that you shouldn't whack the level with your trowel, which I did a lot of the time back in the day. I've learned better. There we go. It's a, this is a thinner one compared to the box level I'm about to show you. Um, for all of those who are interested, I will leave links to all the tools in this video down in the description. So if you would like to check some out and see current prices, then do just jump down there and have a look. So that is a two foot level. And then from there, this is a four foot level in the box, the box style that I much prefer. I did have a level this size in this style and I preferred it, but like I said, it got nicked. Uh, yeah, four foot level, 120 millimeters. What I would like to point out that I do with every level, the first thing I do is I scratch my name in it. If you're on site, a lot of people will have stabilers and they can get pinched. They can, get, well, like mine got pinched. It's still got my name on it. It didn't stop you, but if you catch something with your level, it's got your name on it. So I'd always say, get your set of pins out and uh, scratch your name in there straight away. There you go, four foot level. And this is a six foot level. Now, I don't recommend this brand. Silver line, they are very cheap. This has, well saying that, it has st stood the test of time, but I've gone through a fair few of these. Just because I'm a cheap git, I don't like spending that extra money on the six foot level, purely because I don't use it that often. I've probably had two or three of these. I realistically should have just bought a six foot stabila level and I would never have had to buy another one again, but I was being cheap. And it, it has done the job, but generally what I do is I use this to bridge a large gap or if you're running up a wall check the plumb all the way up a large wall a six foot level but what I do because I don't really trust this vial it's always been correct but I still don't trust it I like to put another level on top just to double check it and there is a way you can check whether a level is plumb level and correct and if you would like me to make a video about that then please do let me know down in the comments and I will do because it's something that every person not necessarily a bricklayer but, bricklayer, but everyone who uses the level should know how to check to make sure your level is working correctly so if you do want to see that then let me know down in the comments so those are the four levels I will leave links to this brand as well as the Stabila brand so if you would like to have a look and compare them then you can go ahead and do that yourself I'll put them down in the comments so those are the four levels that I use all right, now we'll open up the bag. Actually, before we open up the bag, let's go in this front pocket. What do we have in this front pocket? I have got a Stanley, just a normal Stanley, not a Fat Max, just a Stanley tape measure, uh, five meter. And also on the back of it, I have, this is called a neodymium magnet. They are very powerful magnets. And I have these for two reasons. 
One, if you're up on a scaffold and you drop your trowel off the side of the scaffold, all you do is you take that magnet off, put it on the end of your tape, tape it down off the edge of the scaffold and you pick up your trowel and you don't have to go all the way down to pick it up. I'll tell you what, let's grab my trowel out and I'll show you exactly how it works. As you can see, we've got a few tools in here. So, trowel, dropped it on the floor, got your magnet, perfect, jobs are good. And, and the other reason I have this magnet on my, on my tape measure is because I'll put it in my back pocket. And if you're up working off a hop up or something like that and your muck is lower down, you don't want to have to keep putting your trowel down, lifting up a block. For example, if you're laying blocks high above your head, put your trowel down, lift your block up, bend down, pick the trowel up. What I do is, the trowel sticks to the back of my pocket, sticks to that magnet. So you bend down, you pick your block up, lay it, and then all you do is you grab it off your bum and it's good to go. That is why I have these magnets. And again, down in the description. I also have a Fisco brick tape. Now, these are so handy. On it, let me get close to the camera. On it, it will show if it focuses, you have metric measurement, millimeters, and then also you have brick courses and block courses. Now it will tell you gauge. If you don't know what gauge is, um, essentially it's your 75 times table. If you've got a, this is the ground and you go up, that is one course, and then you've got muck and then another course and then muck and another course, etc., etc. So that's up. So if you're looking at this brick work here, 75 mil, 1500, 225, etc, etc. It goes up. And then also you have lateral measurements on there. So this one here, the dark one, is bricks. It will tell you that is the length of a brick, like one brick long. And if you go along and two bricks long, half bricks, etc, etc. It's also got three quarters on there. Very, very good for setting out. And also it will tell you blocks. So if you see it here in the red, this is like the little key. It'll tell you what's what. And if you go along, so this one here, is one block along, two blocks along, and six high. But blocks, one block is the same as three courses of brick. So there's your height of blocks there. Oh, one way around. Fisco brick tape. And I'll tell you what, these are fantastic. I'll tell you what, and I kicked my bloody camera. So you have to excuse me if that is not as it was to start with. Right, okay, so brick tape. Very good. It's also got a little clip on the back. Right, and onto the trowel. I use a Marshalltown 1911 Philadelphia pattern brick trowel. That's it there. You can get various different sizes and shapes. You get Philadelphia pattern, you get London pattern, London wide pattern. There's, there's a whole plethora of different brick trowels. If you want me to go into more detail in brick trowels, again, let me know down in the comments and I will go into different sizes, different types, and my, my opinion on which I prefer and etc etc so yeah let me know down in the comments well i'm going to go through this a bit quickly now because i've got a hell of a lot of stuff in this bag so at any point if you want me to go into more detail about a particular tool again let me know in the comments and i will go into as much detail as i can about a particular tool right we have a chalk line here this essentially all you do is you have you unscrew the top you put chalk in it like um powdered chalk pull that along it's what it's if you want a straight line pull it along one edge the other edge ping it and that will give you the line to follow along right that's a little bit of detail on that but again i'm going to have to be a bit quick here otherwise we're going to have a two hour long video okay so brick brush use this to brush down your bricks afterwards i like having a nice big one <laughs> don't start like that down in the comments i like having a nice big one because i get a lot of uh, a lot of brickwork done in one time okay let me move on to a couple of trowels we have a gauging trowel, this is used for, well they say it's used for gauging different aggregates etc etc but I just find it's just a smaller trowel, it's a cross between a normal trowel and a bucket trowel. So there's that and very handy. Moving on to a bucket trowel, square edge, essentially what it is, just used for getting stuff out of a bucket. I have a lump hammer, just a standard hickory handled uh, I don't even know what the weight of this is, probably a two pound, 2.5 pound lump hammer. And then I also have what I like to call Mjolnir. 
if any of you are Marvel fans out there, you know that Thor, that's Thor's hammer. And this is a double that. I think this is a five kilo or six kilo lump hammer. This is better for cutting concrete blocks or just hitting stuff really, smacking your labourer maybe. Um, moving on from there, a uh, pair of builder's gloves. Always handy having gloves, especially if you're working with cement because cement can um, harm your hands. So I like to wear gloves. Um, right, what I'd like to do is move on to quickly uh, PPE. I have a dust mask. Uh, I'd rather use these than the disposable ones just purely because this gets more coverage around your mouth and there's less chance of any dirt getting in. Uh, safety specs and earmuffs, always, whenever using power tools or anything like that, then always use PPE. Okay, from there, I have just a builder's square and alongside that, I also have a framing square for roofing, not framing square, sorry, my bad, a roofing square. I find these very handy for corners. These. If you just want to cut a 90 degree angle or a 45 angle or various other different angles if you are used to using a roofing square so these two squares come in very handy in conjunction with that it's not necessarily in my bag but it's always in my motor i have a framing square it's a much larger one and this is what i generally use to uh, set out corners nice and square perfect i don't really like the foldable ones the ones that fold up purely because there's that tiny little bit of discrepancy in there and i like I'm a bit particular, I like it being spot on. Okay, right, next, wire brush. These are very handy. What I like to do is whenever I'm laying bricks, I just rub off what muck's on there or rub it off on my trousers and my t-shirt or whatever, and then I let it dry. Next day I come in, get my brush, scrape off that, that last bit of, of cement that's on there. I find that's the better way of keeping a trowel. It has a, a film over the top of that, that cement and you just rub it off and it exposes it back again to a nice nice bare metal. I find that's better than washing it with water because it's more chance to go rusty if you wash it with water. I know it's probably standing still but it's gonna get, it's gonna get rusty otherwise. That's how I like to do it. Everyone's different. Some people like waxing it, some people like using uh, WD-40 on it. Each to their own. Right, moving on. Claw hammer, very simple, very basic claw hammer. Everyone needs a claw hammer. Moving on from that, a small little prying bar, little crowbar. Sorry about the wind. Little pry bar, yeah, very handy. Comes in extremely handy. We have jointing iron. I only have one because I find that this uh, is five eighths and one half. I'm assuming that's inches, certainly not millimeters. And uh, there's one thicker end I like to use for block work or slightly larger perps, and the thinner end I find perfect for brickwork, just works out perfectly. In conjunction with that, I always have, where is it? I always have a bit of hose pipe, especially with reclaimed bricks. I find a hose pipe a nicer finish. It gives a slightly rougher finish than a jointing iron, and I just, it's just more of an aesthetic thing, but hose pipe. Now this is what is called a scutch hammer. Now a lot of people have brick hammers. I personally prefer a scutch hammer. A brick hammer is essentially, it has a chisel on one end and on the other end, it is basically just a hammer, but it's, it's like that. So imagine you have the hammer on one end and then this scutch part on the back end. I prefer this because I have a hammer because I like that, the pry part of the hammer. And I just find the weight of these much, much more easier to use. In one end, I have a chisel and in the other end, I have a cone chisel. This is, I find cone chisels so much better than normal cold chisels for cutting bricks because you can get a much, much nicer, much cleaner cut when, when you're whacking it. As, yeah. So, scutch hammer, very nice. That, again, I, had, I bought that when I was an apprentice and it's lasted so long and it was only a cheap, faithful one. I think it paid about 15 quid for it, so perfect. Uh, moving on from there, I have apparently another bucket, another bucket trail, don't really want that one. Uh, move on to pointing trails. I have two, I have one that I cut the edges off and trimmed it down. It's a very pointy one, it's nice for weather struck and point. And then I have a slightly larger one for those larger situations, so two pointing trails. I have a large cold chisel for those hard to reach places. This is a bit cumbersome sometimes, but it can come in handy. I have two bolsters. A four and a three inch. I did have a two inch one, but I'm not sure where I put it. So it's probably in the back of the motor somewhere. Uh, electrical tape always comes in handy when you want to tape someone's mouth up. Uh, spare filters for my dust mask. I was about to call it a gas mask. Um, then we have a, a cold chisel again, but this one is where you can put um, cone chisels in. It's uh, interchangeable, very handy for getting into those little spots where 
the scutch hammer won't go and like I said these these grip onto bricks a lot better than the cold chisels and I find they just you get much more purchase in there you can get all the gunk out that you need to get out I just yeah very nice I really appreciate them uh, what else do we have in here I make my own corner blocks because I'm a tight git and I think that if you buy one length of two by two and you you could make 50 of these whereas if you buy some uh, I don't know, they're only a few quid to buy them, but I always find that I lose these constantly, so I'd rather just make them myself. If you'd like me to do a short video on how to make these, then do let me know down in the comments. Okay, I have three sets of pins, two here and one up here. You can't see that, it's not in the frame at the moment, but I have three sets of pins with different sets of lines on. These yellow ones I like to use for setting out because they're slightly thicker, they're not very, they don't stretch much. But these ones and the other ones that I have up there have got a different set of line on them, which I use for laying bricks. And that line is called IMEX. If that will focus. I find that this is the best stuff. This was actually given to me by a guy in a building cent in a builder's merchant. I went in just to buy some sand and cement, and he was obviously a rep, and he gave me this stuff. I have always used footprint lines. The, the white lines and I've always sworn by it until I tried this stuff this stuff does not snap I have never had a set of lines snap on me and there's plenty of tug in this I cannot recommend this more highly for someone who's used those uh, the, the white lines for, for years these this is best thing I ever gave to me the best thing that has ever been given to me is this and it didn't cost me a penny so I would seriously advise trying this if you haven't already I always have a little box of posi bits and flathead bits just in case and also I have a screwdriver which interchangeable ends I have a sliding bevel now this is what you use for measuring angles or setting angles if it will open might need a bit of WD-40 on that you can set your angles with that if you're doing cuts like on skew backs or anything like that like these cuts here you use this set the angles once you've worked the angle out you set it with that tighten it up mark it on the brick and you get your grinder out and you start cutting that can move in any different position I would like to apologize to my <laughs> my old brick lane tutor because I pinched this from well I say I pinched it I accidentally left it in my bag at college and I've had this for well over 15 years so apologies if you ever watch this uh, what else do we have? Just a few knick-knacks knick -knack now. Uh, an old wood chisel which has been battered and bruised. This is not as good as a cold chisel purely because it has a rubber end and it absorbs some of the impact when you hit it so you don't get as much of a wallop out of it but it is handy for those tiny little um, more intricate little bits that need coming off where you don't need as much power as that. So it does come in handy. Uh, an adjustable wrench, adjustable spanner, whatever you want to call it. Uh, simple you get all of those different sizes in one so you only have to carry around one perfect uh, what else do we have a pair of electrical cable snippers you never know when you cut a bit of cable that is a mastic remover I've rarely used it but it's there in case I need it and I have actually used it a few times what else do we have in here oh yeah this is very handy I have a little set of allen keys in case you need allen keys for anything they actually come as a lot more handy than you'd imagine another chalk line and oh, onto the front, I have a pocket full of pencils. I have the skinny pencils and the fat pencils, carpenter's pencils. These are handy for general use. These are a lot more handy if you want uh, a bit more of a millimeter perfect line. So I always have a couple of each. I think that is about the size of it. Oh yeah, this one last tool. This is a, it's a laser, laser tape measure I call it basically it's a laser and it will tell you how far away something is this is very handy if you're working up high and you need to work down to a particular point without having to get your tape measure out and tape it all the way down use this just buzz it and it will tell you exactly the distance it is accurate it is very accurate and you can also work out area and volume so if you're pricing up this comes in very handy indeed okay and that leads me on to oh yes one last thing I've got it in my pocket because I only just used it. Where is it? I always have a 10 mil bit, a 10 mil hex hex bit. Let me make sure that's in focus. A 10 mil hex bit so that you can tighten up the nuts for 
a fur fix when you screw it to the wall. I find using this a hell of a lot easier than using a spanner or an adjustable spanner, that's for sure. And then the bag, Fat Max, Stanley Fat Max bag, just an open top, zip up jobby, holds all my tools, carry it around easily, it's perfect. So there we go. That is what I would like to say is in my tool bag and that is what I would suggest well, that's what I've accumulated over the years. I do have many more tools that um, come into sort of more power tool region and things like that. If you'd like me to make a video about power tools, then do let me know what power tools bricklayers use. There's not that many. There's a few, like petrol grinder, a uh, few other bits and pieces that I use. So if you'd like me to make a video about that, then do let me know down in the comments. Other than that, let me know if I am missing any tools out of here that you think I should have in here. And also, well, I think that's about the size of it. So, okay. Those are the bricklaying tools. If you've enjoyed this, please do leave a like down below. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. So, take care. See you then.